So what do you do when you're in the middle of a storm and no power? Well, what do you think you do? You make a video. Hey guys, what you're about to watch is the worst video ever. At least the worst one I've made. I know what you're thinking. Junkman, you made a lot of videos, a lot of bad videos. How can this one be so bad? Well, look. I mean, I know I'm not the expert at doing lights and everything for my videos, but I have no lights at all. I have no lights. That's right. I'm riding out this hurricane storm, and power's been out now since, ah, it's been about five hours, maybe. It came back for about 40 minutes, just enough time for me to watch half of an episode of Glow, and then it just went out. So, sitting here, I was like, well, I don't have Wi-Fi. I don't have a TV. What am I going to do? I'm just sitting here bored. Well, what does somebody do? Well, what does someone like me do when they're bored? Make a video. So, here it goes. We're going to try to do the best we can with this video. And then, sadly, I can't upload it until I get the Wi-Fi and the power back. But, I can edit it and make it and everything and waste a little bit of time, I hope. So, help me waste time during this blackout with a list of 10 toys. That's right. We're going to talk... We're not going to talk Star Wars toys. This is 10 toys from my childhood that I loved. And I was go making up the list. I first went through He-Man, Superpowers, you know, all those basic ones, Rubik's Cube, stuff everybody grew up with. But I started to think, no, let's not just do a top 10 of my favorite. Let's do 10 toys. This is not really in no kind of order. It's just 10 toys that I grew up with that I really loved. And I, I tried to make it kind of toys that maybe you don't hear about all the time. You know, we all know about Nintendo. We all know about Atari. We all know about Rubik's Cube and all that. So I kind of wanted to get away from the basic 10 toys that's popular. So here's 10 toys that I grew up on. And most of you that grew up during the 70s and the 80s, you probably grew up on these also. So let's take a look. Okay, I opened some more windows, so let's get us a little bit more light. So here it goes, number 10. Does anybody remember bicycles? <laughs> I know what you're thinking, oh, so what? But these were late 80s mag wheels, unless that's what we called them. They were, you know how the metal spokes? These had plastic spokes or plastic rims. Uh, I think most of them was made, or the good ones were made by BMX. And boy, did I want one. I think everybody in the neighborhood wanted one for Christmas, probably 87, 88, somewhere around then. You just had to have it or you wasn't the cool kid. I mean, you could jump ramps on it, pop willies. You could do all kinds of things. It was the bicycle to have. And back in the 80s, before you could drive, having a bicycle was your only way to escape. We couldn't run off into the internet and talk to strangers. No, the only way to get away from our parents and have freedom was a bicycle. And we rode it all over town. Now, as far as I know, kids today don't really ride the bicycles not like they did back in the day i mean in my neighborhood every kid had a bicycle and we all had a place to go mostly riding around the woods jumping ramps but the mag wheel bicycle was the one to have it beat all the others and finally my birthday came late september um like i said probably 87 88 and i got one i couldn't believe it and all my other friends you know had to wait until christmas time to get one yeah <laughs> but i got it early so I rode it to school. Took me about 30 minutes to get there. Had to leave early. I didn't care. I was going to ride my bicycle to school. How cool is that? No more buses for me. I had a mag wheel bicycle and I was going to pop wheelies all the way home. So I rode it all the way to the school. Chained it up out front with the other bikes and went to school. Forgot that I had to go to the dentist. So my mom picked me up kind of early that day. That's okay. My bicycle was chained up. I'll get it when I come back with my toothache and all. I don't care. So I came all the way back to school after the dentist. I mean, it's one thing, you know, to go and have dental work. But then to come back and find out your prized bicycle is gone, that's right. They even took the chain I locked it up with. But that's it. The mag bicycle. Like I said, anybody growing up in the 80s and probably before that had to have a bicycle. I know I've got a son now that's 11. He has a bicycle, but he doesn't ride it all over the place like I used to. I used to cruise the town. I mean, it was my car before I had a car. Every kid had to have a bicycle. So, the BMX or just any bicycle, really, but the one I want to talk about the most here is the Magwheel bicycle. It was awesome. Hey, pass me the nuts. What the hell are you talking about? 
Okay, that's a weird name, right? Pass me the nuts. But it's not as bad as it sounds. This was a game around 1974, 1975. I don't know how I remember it because I was only born in 72. So maybe I got, maybe they re-released it in the later 70s or maybe it just stayed out that long. But this is called Pass the Nuts. And I doubt anyone else remembers this because it's not really a well-known toy, I don't think. All it is is some kind of little flipper game. Now, why did I put on this list some stupid little game like this? Well, it was a lot of fun when I was little, trying to get that nut all the way up to the top and all the way back down. But anyway, I think it was made by Tommy, the company. They made a lot of good toys back then. It was just something to pass time with. But it sure was fun. I think you only had two or three buttons right down at the bottom you have to hit. I'll put a picture up on there when I get power back. But I just want to see, really, if you remember past the nuts. Does anyone out there remember past the nuts? Did anyone besides me pass nuts? <laughs> <laughs> Number eight, and it's just two words. I say these two words, and it's going to fill your mind with all the bad assery you had as a child, especially if you grew up in the 70s. Green Machine. Green Machine. Eight, nine, ten years old, old enough for Green Machine, a racer for guys who like a ride that's really fast. Stick shift controls, swivel action rear wheels, twist, turn, and spin like wild. Green Machine. What a ride! Yeah. Who didn't love that? And it had a mergy brake on the, one of the tires, so you could do some sweet ass slides. <laughs> I mean, it was awesome. We had a big hill by our house, and I would go to the top of that hill. We didn't wear helmets when we rode our bicycle. We didn't care about cars in the road. We didn't care. I went down that big hill on that green machine, probably hit, well, in my mind, I was hitting about 80, 90 miles an hour, probably hit about 5 or 10. Maybe it was a big hill. I might have got it up higher than that. But you get down to the bottom of that hill, slide that mercy brake, and slide all the way across the yard. And if you hit that slide just right, you could pop it up over the curb and slide down into the grass of your house. Man, you were a badass if you had the green machine. And if you didn't have it, everyone in the neighborhood wanted to be your friend. So number eight, the green machine. Green machine with stick shift steering. Some assembly required. Green machine by Marks. Now, I've seen this one under a couple different names. The Battle of Navarron. This was a, a two-foot-tall mountain <laughs> playset. It was awesome. It was made for World War II. But as a Star Wars fan, this was a rebel hideout. Or sometimes it was Darth Vader's cave. Me and my brother used it for Star Wars figures. Now, I think originally it came with some army men. I know there's one version that comes with a Japanese flag at the top. But this is a pretty awesome set. On one side, you got the big old mountain. Flip it around, you got the inside of the mountain where you have levels for all the figures to stand on they could stand at these little windows with their guns drawn it was very good even for star wars figures like i said you put stormtroopers up there near the windows you could have your rebel soldiers trying to get to the cave trying to reach the top where darth vader is it was an awesome play set like i said i've seen it under a couple of different names the battle of neveron play set is what i know it as but if you've never seen this thing and you're into old vintage toys maybe you didn't grow up during this time or didn't have it check it out and if you've got a toy room or something like that, it's a really good toy to have just sitting around and on display. It looks amazing. The Battle of Navarron. Man, I want to play with it right now. In the dark. Okay, now I said I wasn't going to talk about really common toys, but I think we're going to have to make an exception here. Because during the 70s, this was a toy that every kid had. I know every kid wanted it. See, that back then, toys, there were certain toys like Star Wars and some other ones that all kids had. And you had to have this one. And we're talking about Ideals, Evil Knievel Stunt Cycle. And what was so great about it, you could run it into walls. You could make it do jumps and it wouldn't break. If they did this today, two or three jumps, it would crack in half, I'm sure. But not the Evil Knievel Stunt Cycle. And if you don't know who Evil Knievel is, look him up. No one was more of a badass than Evil Knievel. He would do all kinds of jumps. Most of the time he would wreck, and I think he broke every bone in his body. But that's what we loved about him. It's not that he made the jumps. We loved that he risked doing them. I remember one time he jumped over a bunch of school buses, and I think he crashed on landing. But we loved Evil Knievel, and we loved reenacting Evil Knievel with our stunt cycle. It had a little base. You put the Evil Knievel uh, motorcycle with the figure on it. Crank up the bass like this real hard. It made the worst sounding grinding noise you could possibly hear. You just turn it. The faster you turn it, the more he would go. Then you let go. He fly off that bass. 
and he would pop a wheelie. Oh, it was awesome. And you could make little ramps for him. He'd jump over them ramps. Now, back in the early 2000s, they re-released this. And I found one at Cracker Barrel. Me and my daughter at the time, she was probably four or five. We had a blast with this thing. Sadly, I don't think they've re-released that since then. And the ones on eBay are kind of pricey, so it's hard to buy one to play with it. But maybe if you can find the reissued one in the 2000s, buy it on eBay. Take it and play with it. This is one of those toys that's fun to collect, but you have to play with it. This isn't one you want to leave in the box because this is probably the most fun toy you had back in the 70s, making it do all kinds of jumps. You would build ramps to see what you could jump over. You would do ramps just letting them jump into the wall or see how, who could do the longest wheelie. It was awesome. Evil Knievel Stunt Cycle. Every kid in the 70s had this toy. Here's Evil up and over that four-foot ditch. Evil Knievel sold separately or with the Evil Knievel Stunt Cycle from Ideal. What did a fan of Star Wars really want as a kid? His very own lightsaber, of course. But besides that, his own droid. And around 1986, we got that with the Burbot. He was like having your own R2-D2. Or at least that's what we thought when we saw the commercial. He even kind of looked like R2. And you could program him to do stuff like feed your dog. Man, I couldn't wait to get this. I could sit back in my chair watch some Fraggle Rock or Smurfs and just say, hey, Burbot, go get me a Mellow Yellow out of the fridge. And it would do it, right? No, it wasn't. We all got tricked into it like we did many toys. And let's be honest, although it was pretty cool looking, it kind of sucked. And if you're like me, you lost the remote about six months later and it was no good. You just had a big, heavy paperweight. And the worst thing about this is you had to program it every time you turned it back on. It had some buttons on his chest. Like you would push the forward button and you would have to say into the mic, forward. And you would have to say about 60 times, forward, forward. And then every time you told him to go forward, you had to say it exactly the same. Well, this was mid-80s. I'm sure the technology at the time was great, but it sure wasn't much fun. I'm sure today it would be a lot better. And also, I don't know what it was about the plastic, but you leave it outside a little too long, it's gonna turn yellow. But it was fun for at least the first couple hours to say you had your own droid. So Verbot makes my list. I love it. It was cute, I give him that. Here's Verbot, a robot you can program to perform eight different functions. Go right. Take you can down. control Verbot with your own voice. Go left. Verbot, I said left. Okay, we all know growing up in the 80s about the Rubik's Cube, right? But Rubik's made a bunch of other things. And one of the best or the most fun for me was the Rubik's Snake. Now, it's classified as a puzzle, much like the Rubik's Cube, but it wasn't like anything to solve. You just kind of just made shapes with it. The easiest was the snake, but my friend could make a cobra. Yeah, he made a cobra out of it. I could never make that cobra, and I had another friend that could make a ball. I'm not sure if I can't remember if I ever learned how to make the ball, but I could make a dog, and I loved making the dog. I could make his ears stand up or his tail lay down. I was the master at making the dog out of the snake. Making a dog out of a snake. That's that's odd saying, isn't it? But Rubik's did a lot more than just the snakes in the Rubik's Cube. So this is kind of just a Rubik's all together. Because we all love the Rubik's Cube, right? There was also the Rubik Lynx. I think that was the name of it. <laughs> but anyway, it was, it was just a flat... It was a flat... It was a fat piece of... Fat. It was a very thin piece of plastic that had circles on it. You would fold it a bunch of ways and then unfold it, and the links would be together if you did it right. A lot of times, though, you would just fold it so many times that the fishing string inside that held it all together would be all tangled up, and you would end up breaking the damn thing. But it was a lot of fun. And I could do it. That's what I looked about the links. I could link them all together. Sure, I went to B. Dalton and read a how-to book, but it was very simple once you figure it out. Now, I, my sister had a how to solve the Ruby's Cube, and she could solve that thing fast after reading that book. I went step by step through that book and could never do it. I could never get more than one color on a Rubik's Cube. I don't know if that's saying something about my intelligence or not. You know how it is. Whenever you want to, in a movie, you want to show how smart someone is, they always had them playing with the Rubik's Cube, right? Well, I did amaze my friends that I could put one color on the cube, but my sister and brother could do the whole thing, but they did cheat and read it in a book. But the Rubik's Snake, let's get, but let's get back to the snake. The snake was fun. You could make a ball. You could make all kinds of things with it. 
I don't even know if they still make it. I would love to find a Rubik snake today and play with it. So if you ever get a chance, if you didn't have one to chow, check out the Rubik snake. And if you're into all this puzzle thing, get see if you can find the links too, because they're very fun also if you can do it without getting the wire all tangled up. I'm gonna get you, Rubik. It's Rubik's Magic Puzzle, the new challenge from the incredible Erno Rubik. The cube was easy. I dare you to link the rings. Okay, here we are at number four, number five. I don't know what number it is. But this is one I have to talk about. It's from the late 70s, and it was so cool. Shogun Warriors. Anyone out there have Shogun Warriors? Now, the one I had was a little die-cast one. Yeah, it was cool and fun, but my brother had this huge one. I mean, it was tall, and it had a fist that shot off. That's right. He would aim it at me, hit that button, and that fist would pop me in the face like that. <laughs> Man, it was fun. It was fun for him anyway. You know, I'd get hit in the head with a big giant fist. But it was fun when I got to play with it. And it also shot off these little rockets out of his hands. It had all kinds of features. If I remember right, I think his top of his head came off. It was like a little spaceship inside of his head. Does that sound right? Like if I had some power, I would Google it and search to find out. But I think he had some little dome on his head that came off. I'm sure a lot of people out there know Shogun Warriors. I actually saw where they did a Boba Fett Shogun Warrior a couple of years ago. I would love to have that. That's awesome. That's combining two loves together. That's like peanut butter and chocolate together. That's like a Reese cup. But anyway, Shogun Warriors. Like I said, I think it came out in the late 70s. I don't think they ran too much because it seemed like by the 80s, people moved on. Now, growing up in the 70s and the 80s, there was a show that I used to love called Space Giants. It was a Japanese show, and I think they translated it into America. It had this little boy, and whenever he needed help, he would blow his whistle. He'd blow it like one time, and his little friend would come help. Two times and this lady would come help, and three times Goldar, like the big robot would come, they would transform into a rocket ship and come help him. It was kind of like a Godzilla thing. It was very awesome. And I remember, oh, the bad guy, Hordak, I think was, was his name. No, not Hordak. Hordak was from He-Man. What was that guy's name? I know Goldar was the hero. Oh, and they had the Lugu Man. Lugu Man, is that how you say it? Remember the Lugu Man that would kind of melt? But who was this guy? God, he was ugly. He reminded me of this friend's grandma that we used to have. That's what he looked like to me. And it would make me terrified when I would see this kid at school's grandma come pick him up. Because that's who he looked like. Who was that guy's name? I forget. Anyway, I'll, for I'll forget. And like I said, I have no powers. I can't look it up right now. But anyway, Shogun Warriors were so fun. And they reminded me of Space Giants, a show that I loved as a kid. Shogun Warriors. I want some Shogun Warriors right now. Imagine you enter the world of the Shogun Warriors. They're on the move. There's Raideen with Delta Wing missiles, Dragoon with a star shooter, and Mazinga with a rocket launcher. The Shogun. Imagine you command them to defend freedom, protect justice, and challenge evil. The Shoguns. They're ready to strike when you are. Shogun Warriors, Mazinga, Dragoon, Raideen, equipped with their own gear, each sold separately from Mattel. Number two, the PXL-2000. Now I know what you're thinking. Is that some kind of droid in Star Wars? No, it's not. It's a Fisher-Price camcorder. That's right. You could make your own videos with this, and it used cassette tape to record the videos on. And you could watch the shitty black and white video back on your TV. It was horrible, but I loved this thing as a kid. And honestly, I was a teenager. I was probably older than most people when they bought this. It came out around 1987. I was probably around 15, almost 16 years old, playing with this video camera, but I didn't care. The video camera my dad had hooked to the VCR. You had to put the whole strap on you, put the VCR in the strap, had a big camera like this. And your parents would be pissed off if you took that with you to your friend's house. But this, you could take with you anywhere you wanted to go. All you needed was a cassette tape and the camera. And it was horrible. But like I said, back then I didn't care. I made videos, kind of like I'm doing today. But nobody watched them. We didn't have YouTube. And none of my friends wanted to come over and watch any videos I made. It was horrible. But again, I like it. And but sure, it was horrible, but it was fun. Looking back on it, sure, it was horrible. But it wasn't as bad. I mean, it's horrible in today's standards. But back then, it got the job done. It wasn't great. But hey, it was better than nothing. In fact, I would love to find my old tapes. I bet I got some crazy stuff on those old cassette tapes that I recorded with this video camera. And it seems to have some kind of a love. Because on eBay, these things go for kind of a high price. Probably almost about what the retail was back then, for around $200. So apparently people still love this thing. Did you have one? It was called the PXL of 2000. Now, I had the normal one that came with the camera and a cassette tape. And all the wires to hook it up with. But there was another one that cost a little bit more. They actually came with a monitor. You had to be one of the rich kids to get that one, I guess. You know, like those kids that had the robot with the Nintendo that played along with it. 
I didn't even have a light go with my Nintendo. But anyway, the PXL2000 Fisher Price camcorder. The quality sure is crappy by today's standards, but man, did I love this thing. Alright. Stop me. So what's uh, the last one to talk about? This was considered a board game, I guess, or a game, but I don't know if you're like me. My brother and sister were all older than me, and I would get games for Christmas, and nobody would ever play them with me. I would never have any fun with them. I remember I got, got the Indiana Jones board game, and no one would ever play it with me. I was a loser. No one wanted to play board games. I don't know why my parents bought me board games, because I knew they weren't going to play it with me. My brother and sister, they were out doing 80s things, and they didn't want to play with me. But this one, you could play by yourself, and boy, did I love to play with myself. Okay, that came out wrong. But anyway, this game was called Crossbows and Catapults. It was a game taking place probably like during the Robin Hood days. This game was so cool. You set up your little castle and everything, and you would have catapults and crossbows to launch these discs and try to knock down the other person's castle, I think. I don't remember much about it, but I remember you build it up, and you shoot these discs across each other trying to kill their army. I think you could take out their soldiers, take out their castles. I remember you had a catapult you could put near the castle and fire into the other guy's army. It was a lot of fun. Now, I've seen this thing re-release under different names throughout the years, so it's still out there. The original I had was called Crossbows and Catapults. I said the word crossbows so many times, it don't even sound right anymore. But this was a lot of fun. I mean, like I said, even just playing it by yourself was fun. You could just set it up and shoot those. And of course, being the Star Wars nerd I was, sometimes I would set up my Star Wars figures and launch those discs into it. I remember one time putting R2-D2 on a catapult and shooting him across the room. So I had a lot of fun with it, even if I didn't get to actually play it like the game. I do remember my friend coming over, and we did try to play it as a game one time, but I can't remember that. I just remember setting it up and shooting all those discs everywhere. Man, it was a lot of fun. Crossbows and catapults by Lakeside. The fantasy adventure with real action. Better luck next time. Oh. Well, that's a look at some of the toys I grew up with in the 70s and the 80s, and I hope I refresh some of your memories on some of this stuff. I hope I made you say, oh my God, I remember passing the nut with my brother, and stuff like that. Because that's what I love about doing these videos is that I remember stuff I forgot all about, and I hope I can help you remember some of the toys you forgot about. That's funny. And I want to also thank you for helping me waste my time while I ride out this storm. I was hoping the power would come back on while I was making this video, but it doesn't look like it did. So as soon as I get power, I'll upload it to YouTube, and you'll watch it. So thank you for watching it. And if you enjoy this, uh, give us a like. If you enjoy this, thumbs up, comment, share it. Let me know you like it, and maybe we'll do a part two of some other toys you may have forgotten. So again, thank you for watching, and check out StarWarsJump.net. Again, we don't do just Star Wars, as you know. We do Kenner stuff, toy stuff. We just do whatever we want to do. And check out the latest pod, Kenner podcast and the new Star Wars podcast. Uh, they're both up on iTunes, Google Play, on the website, so here on YouTube. So check it out. And thank you for watching, everybody, and we'll see you on the next video.